Yeah, yeah big one. <laughs> what leg is it? It's LaCroix. Oh, is this LaCroix? Yeah, this one here is three. There's that fateful moment when the boat leaves and you say, golly, I hope I didn't forget something. Uh, so it's just the boat. Nothing's going to There's the moment the boat leaves and like, make sure I got everything. And then there's when you're setting up camp for the first night. Yeah. There's the falls. Don't want to drift over there. on the line here. The water's pretty high, so there's some areas here where I'm getting thrown around a little bit because of the cross currents. Well, here we are, morning one. As you can see, it's clouded up a little bit here, but still a beautiful morning. Today's goal is to get in the bent pine. Just paddling in the bent pine. Gonna... I'm at the campsite on bent pine. Four star campsite. One of the criterion they use to judge is the landing. Look at this beautiful land. <laughs> Let's check this place out.
and pad. Right here she be, and of course the most important thing. Well, here we are on our first morning on Ben Pine Lake. And kind of waiting for a storm to slip by here. It's currently quarter to nine, and the forecast is for rain today. But there's this, a thunderstorm that's just hanging right on the edge here. And uh, I'm waiting for that thing to either make or break itself. And then I'm going to go hit the water. So a big part of my routine up here is always to do stretches and abdominal workouts. Trying to work those muscles that don't tend to get utilized in the canoe when you're sitting all day. So here's the other ab maneuver that I like. Just basic crunches. I do them in sets of 25, and then that dying roach too. So anyway, that's part of our routine here, and we did. We knew it was gonna rain eventually, and here it is. I always like to read about historical explorer type subjects makes me feel like I'm connecting with the subject matter. Just caught the first walleye of the trip. Just got up, holding my pants up until I get my belt on. But this is an example of when you get up in the morning, you're happy you have a compass because you have to travel.
absolutely perfect conditions on Sturgeon Lake. so grateful to be here. We've got a few miles to paddle into that beautiful calm horizon. It's nice to get a chance to dry out. It's been pretty cloudy and wet these past few days and there's been a lot of dew at night. So nice to dry everything out. Everything. Here I am after all this time later, after portaging and paddling all day in the sun. And now I'm thinking, I didn't quite drink enough. My bad. Dehydration is one of the most debilitating, but yet easily preventable problems that we run the risk of incurring up here. Back when I was running marathons, I used to consume this water mix that's enhanced with electrolytes. Ever since then, I've carried it up here on these trips, and especially rely on it during these hot periods. And since I was starting to display the classic symptoms, such as energy loss, low-grade headache, slight confusion, and little loss of balance, just to be safe, I drank another bottle, and within a little while, I was out there working on dinner. on sturgeon, we're gonna head up and fish a creek that flows into the lake. It's a little early in the season. This is probably the first warm days which is what really makes me optimistic. We're coming up to Lonely Creek. So, big flow of water coming in here. Definitely gonna be some bass. Working our way up to the pool here. Kind of at the top of it, we're in a little different spot. like five in a row. I'm gonna keep the camera on just to show six. Number 24. from a white to a crayfish colored grub. Getting 
smaller and smaller. After 30 some bass, it's four o'clock and we're gonna be paddling into the wind. Oh, this part of sturgeon is one of my favorite areas. Okay, we are departing our campsite on Sturgeon Lake here. I just want to show you what the boat looks like fully loaded. So we're heading out today. We got about a 12 mile cruise and we've got that baby loaded down with most of the weight in the back. Of course, everything is tied into the boat. Every single thing is tied in so that if by any chance we experience that first capsize, the only thing we're gonna probably lose is the pole we're using and some lures laying on the bottom of the boat. And hopefully not the driver. So here we go. He's bound it down, load it up and truck it. Are we gonna do what they say can be done? Oh, we've got a long way to go and a short time to get there. I'm eastbound just watch no bandit run. Just stopped to make an adjustment. I added a couple of rocks to the front of the boat for ballast and shed my under armor, which probably dropped the temperature about 15 degrees. On days like this, it's important to protect yourself from the sun, to try to stay cool through the proper use of clothing, and most importantly, hydrate. Keep drinking water regularly, even if you don't feel thirsty. I'm trying to decide what to do here. I'm on an island, and rather than going out there and fighting that current, I'm gonna cut through this part of it, providing it's clear passage, and then make a dash upriver, hugging the right shoreline. There's quite a few snags, but I don't think anything that's gonna hang me up. This is gonna be fun here, so I'm gonna use a five foot straight shaft paddle for maximum power and control. Here we are, making land. Under conditions like this, there's only one way to get out.
Never stayed here before. Never heard anything about it. Let's see what we got. Wow. Yeah, I like it. Ooh, look at that tent pad. Freshened up, just getting ready to leave Russell. Got about four or five waterfalls in rapids to portage around or paddle through, actually. It's going to be hot. Today's big challenge is going to be protection from the sun and the heat. It's time to go.
probably the most beautiful spot that I know of here in the Quetico. So, at least on Canopy Lake. Just to give you a feel for the unpredictable nature of the weather here. Gorgeous day, beautiful afternoon. Then you look out here and holy cow, not so good. Nice, not so nice. We never get complacent with the weather. We. Uh, Hope for the best and always prepare for the worst. As you can see, I've got the tarp set up here and uh, we are hunkering down uh, if necessary. But uh, the beauty of this site is it's up on a high ridge. Now wait till you see the tent site. There's actually two tent sites. I chose the lesser of the two in the pursuit of protection. So first I'll show you what I chose. Then I'll show you what I could have chose. I've been to this site many times. I love this place. So I like this because there's a little bit of protection here from the weather coming in over this long open expanse. But then, here's the ultimate tent site. Right here. Could have spent the night here, which I've done before, but the weather looked a little iffy, and it continues to. So rather than be right here, literally, on the edge, I have chosen to be right there behind this nice protective rock. Sometimes I can be maybe overcautious, be nice to be on the edge of the cliff there with a great view but if a big storm blows in I'd rather have that rock in front of me and it an interesting little bit of weather as you know it's dynamic here so it's always changing so been enjoying sunshine but always got to keep your eye on the horizon this sucker's coming and I think we're gonna just catch the edge of it just to show you what's right around the corner So I'm gonna relocate to below the tarp. It's gonna hit us here any, probably within five minutes. So here we are, literally five minutes later. We had to reconfigure the tarp. This won't last long. Look at that rain coming down, baby. Picked a good day to be in camp. You've got to let your muscles recover. You gotta. Respect your body. Mm. <sighs> the view from the comfy seat. Going to try to catch tonight's dinner really easy there's some moving water there so hopefully just grab a couple quick walleyes come back cook I've really tried to stay out of the boat today trying to rest up
well right now at one of my favorite campsites. Beautiful island. About, oh, I don't know, three, four miles down in Canopy from the uh, last site. So I sat down literally five minutes ago, gonna drink another quart of water and just kind of plan my approach here for the afternoon fishing. And the wind starts picking up and it gets a little dark. Now I'm starting to wonder if there isn't a doggone storm blowing my way. And I need to start thinking about setting up the darn tarp. I was hoping not to have to set it up. So watch this. We'll see what's coming here. Just making the final approach here, getting to the edge of the island to be able to look up to the north and get the big picture. And as I look out there, oh man, we're gonna get slammed. I'm not gonna walk back. I'm gonna run and get that tarp set up. Can you believe that 20 minutes ago I was shedding clothing, trying to stay cool enough to be able to spend the afternoon out in the sun. Some really good thunder. We're right in the throat of it. Come morning, no matter the weather, travel day. So we'll be getting up and moving out. We got a little lull in the rain. I'm gonna check it out here. I was starting to wonder how long it would take and boom, just walking away and there they come. So perfect. Clean it up boys. Baked four cheese risotto walleye. Had some extra fuel so I uh, wanted to burn off the rest of the garbage. So basically, just lit a match. It is seven o'clock on Thursday and just getting packed up. Final packing going on right now leaving Knippy, heading down to Agnes, and have all day to paddle. Looks like we got a little northeast wind action going.
here doing the paddle south. Probably, I'm thinking eight, nine miles to go. Beautiful weather, sunny, cool enough. Windy though, unfortunately, got a little bit of a headwind. But uh, anyway, should be there by nightfall, easy. We have arrived at our campsite at Louisa Falls. Time is now 7.15. So basically 12 hours of paddling. Final morning, just pulling out of Agnes Lake Beach campsite. The rain has found us again. But fortunately, I was able to get the tent pulled and everything put away before it started falling. Time is now 7.10 and we are headed for Prairie Portage. What was the greatest or the worst event? Every night? I got to make the Great Lake Portage and catch lots of Great Lake fish. 
Yeah. yeah. Great Lake Port. Tough lot of blowdowns. Oh, I forgot about that. It, <laughs> yeah. Oh. Starting shot here, guys. There's the mighty Bailey Bay that oftentimes gets people hung up. Because if that southwesterly's whipping across there, you're not going to make this little paddle that I'm doing now. Here it is, though. If you see that sky coming in, looks like we're getting out of here just in time. Yeehaw! Carter. Carter and Dexter. Dexter ran into these two fine gentlemen. They are maintaining the portage trails. 115 miles of paddling, I didn't encounter a single blowdown. Thank you guys. You're welcome. Wanted to take a look at the fish counter was not very good. You could normally catch that many fish in about a day and a half. But really didn't fish that much, comparatively, when you think of all the paddling. great family and of course their dad you know really nobody with more history in Quetico than Jeep few minutes back I don't know how to act it's like touching something and it just automatically goes it's so foreign it's like this is so cool you can't imagine how 